Welcome to episode number 159. Today we're interviewing Zen pilot Robert De Laurentiis about his uh, Citizen of the World flight, right? Absolutely. This is one of the coolest things that I have ever heard of. <laughs> so this episode is brought to you by our Aviation Sales and Marketing Lab, where you get to work with our clients, such as Robert, uh, among other people. We've got the coolest people on the planet in the Sales and Marketing Lab. Yep. And the neat thing is uh, you get to work with them on your individual sales and marketing situation, and you also get to talk with other people who are in the same similar situation and what you're in and running into some of the same challenges. Just realize when you get in that they are not shy, and if mm-hmm. you ask a question, they're going to answer it. Absolutely. Without regard for your feelings about what you're doing. Exactly. So uh, the Sales and Marketing Lab provides networking opportunities. We've got a private Facebook group with incredibly cool people. Um, we've got custom consulting using our office hours, which is the least expensive way to get our help with your projects and things. Uh, we've got a book club. We've got SEO reports and other tools and things that we leverage so that we get, we're able to use our economies of scale <laughs> to provide some things for some of our smaller clients you know, that really don't have the wherewithal to do a marketing department of their own. Right? It's nice to have economies of scale. It's big enough to do that. <laughs> exactly. Right. And we work on one project a month. So by the end of the year, there will be 12 things about your marketing system that are a thousand times better than they were at the beginning of the year, right? Right. Okay. So, Robert De Laurentiis. If you haven't heard of Robert, you will soon, right? That's right. Uh, he is a Zen pilot uh, working on a record breaking circumnavigation with 43 countries in the spirit of San Diego. That was actually a couple of years ago. That was his last project. More than 100 TV, radio, newspaper, and magazine interviews. He's an internationally featured speaker for EAA and AOPA. I'm really excited to introduce Robert De Laurentiis. Good for you. And here he goes. <laughs> All right. Robert, we're really excited to have you. I know you're in the final stretch of preparations for your flight, and uh, so we're really glad that you could spend some time with us this morning. I'm happy to talk with you. You know, the more people I can share my story with, the better. Fantastic. We're trying to reach outside of general aviation and capture interest from the rest of the world. And on our first flight, you know, around uh, the equator back in 2015, it was very much uh, aviation safety and technology, but... Because this flight connects the South Pole to the North Pole and everybody in between, we want to get people outside of aviation excited about aviation. I think that's how we'll grow it. A lot of general aviation is focused on high school kids, which is great. But, you know, beyond that, there's the young kids that need to be uh, inspired. And then everybody out there who ever dreamed of flying is also another potential. So we're um, trying to hit all our different markets. Right. And I know everybody in the industry is concerned about getting kids interested in aviation and in in the sciences and things just because we can see the math you know we're going to need more of everything right yeah and you know the trip even though it's only about three and a half months what i call the pay dirt uh, especially for sponsors is the two years after the trip because we'll be taking this plane that's you know set records speed and distance records over the poles and carried a nasa experiment and been tracked for the first time ever using the 66 new Ariane satellites globally and over the poles uh, around the different aviation groups, hopefully EAA Young Eagle groups, and letting them get on a Glime simulator and experience some of the things I might experience over the poles. Hopefully not, but um, you know, fuel gelling at minus 67 Celsius, a loss of navigation, pilot fatigue, uh, some of the worst weather in the world, and uh, sure some other surprises but right. to experience it on the simulators and then literally go into the plane which is going to be the best video game on the planet with all the <laughs> late avionics and see it touch it smell it experience it and That's- we're hoping that they'll take pictures next to those giant five bladed you know 10 foot props uh with a lift aviation aviation helmet on Right. Uh, that'll be a memorable picture to post on their social media for sure. And the oh, first yeah. closer, hopefully. Absolutely. So let's back up really fast for people who aren't familiar with your flight. And maybe you can give us the, um, the 10,000 foot view or the 30,000 foot view of uh, what this is, what you're doing and why you're doing it. Yeah, 35,000 feet is hopefully where I'll be flying most of this. Um, 
So the, the flight currently departs January 12th from San Diego's Gillespie Field. It's supposed to be three and a half months, but we're not in a hurry to get it done because we're going for maximum visibility for the aviation community and to support our world peace cause. And I'll stop in approximately 26 countries, hopefully lecturing for some of the UN Association offices and the different explorer clubs. And if there's a big enough crowd, I'd like to you know, throw in some more presentations so we can get the word out. But um, the goal is to connect the South Pole to the North Pole and everybody in between on a mission of global peace. And at a time when the world is divided or no pun intended, polarized, we want to connect the poles. And um, the plane is a global billboard for our causes. One of the things we want to highlight are the oceans because there's 70% of the planet. And I'll be flying along the Southern Pacific, Southern Atlantic, and the North Atlantic Ocean. So there's that. We're also highlighting the Nicholas Foundation, which is an organ transplant foundation. And uh, their founder, Rodney Devon, is going to be flying with me on the first leg. And we've produced a second coloring book that you haven't seen yet, but um, you will soon on um, their organization and it ties in nicely with the flight. So besides the NASA experiment that we're carrying, which is a wafer craft spaceship, we're going to highlight some aviation safety and technology and set some speed and distance records over the poles. Fantastic. That's an awful <laughs> it is. And something that big, you're working with an awful lot of organizations and, and things like that. That's a, an amazing undertaking. Yeah, we have about 80 sponsors now. You guys are, of course, one of them. And uh, Probably you know, so. <laughs> a trip like this is not possible as one person. It mm -hmm. takes uh, a village. And we have some of the most amazing, generous people behind us, uh, not just you know working on the trip, as uh, mechanics or installing ferry tanks or our social media or with you guys promoting some of the products of the foundation. Um, but, you know, there's some just random people that have reached out and they're true philanthropists. They're not always wealthy people, but um, they have big hearts and they're generous. So we appreciate everyone who's contributed. And, you know, uh, I've been asked many times uh, or people have told me you inspire me and the truth of the matter is, is all these people that are supporting me are the ones that inspire me. So it's really interesting to go from those people and then try to fly it forward to use uh, aviation expression. But um, I really believe that there's change that's possible in the world because of this flight. And, you know, we all have a lot of time into it. For me, it's a year and a half of preparation compared to the six months I did on the equatorial circumnavigation. This is so much more complicated. Uh, the reach is astronomically greater. And, um, you know, part of the thing that we talk about in the first book, Flying Through Life, is dreaming impossibly big. What that means is when you get scared or encounter some sort of hurdle, rather than sort of leaning back, you actually lean into it. Mm -hmm. And that's hard to do. Mm -hmm. But we want to show the world how to do that and not talk about it. We've been talking about this for 16 months now. So now it's time to perform. And I think, we're what's that? I said, I know that you uh, have a number of ways to help finance this thing. Do you have some products that you could talk about? Absolutely. You know, one of the reasons we uh, developed the products was there was a need in the general aviation and aviation communities. The other thing is we thought about crowdfunding, but, um, we wanted to contribute more and we wanted people to get some value directly for their dollars. And, um, you know, quite honestly, a lot of pilots are privileged white males and asking for money that way is not probably the most productive way to do it. So we wanted to give back. And to answer your question though, uh, we have a series of different products. There are the books that I'm so proud of. Um, flying through life was before the trip in 2015 Zen Pilot, Flight of Passion, and the Journey Within, which has been um, number one on and off in the airports category for the last year, is um, a top seller um, on Amazon that we're very proud of. Most recently, we re, um, released a coloring book about the trip, and it's sort of a teaching learning experience for parents and their kids. We have a second coloring book coming out that we've worked with um, the Nicholas Foundation on. 
And then I don't know if you know this, but uh, we have a rough draft of our children's nighttime book called The Little Plane That Could. So we have the words and now it's been sent to the illustrator. And our goal is to reach out and have a first exposure for very young kids, right? When they're starting to dream about flying. And the aviation community is squarely focused on high school kids because they'll be pilots in a few years. But because we're a 501c3, we don't have that limitation and we want to reach further back and grab their attention when they're impressionable and when they're dreaming. Oh, no kidding. That's where it starts, right? Yeah, right. Right before they go to sleep, right? When they're about to dream. (laughs) Exactly. And, you know, one of the things that I really love is that you've created interactive products where people use them with each other, like the the coloring books. Uh, We took one of these to a family party and had everybody coloring on the same page, literally on the same page, and talking about your trip, which I think is um, a great way to get conversation started and to spend time with each other on something positive instead of standing around talking politics, which is what everybody dreads this time of year, right? Yeah. And, you know, the thing we found about the coloring book is uh, people sort of drop their defenses when they're looking at a coloring book and dealing with their kids. It's something very positive, like our mission of Mm -hmm. uh, one planet, one people, one plane. So you're appealing to them on a different level. Yeah. I think the thing that most people do is they just sort of smile and get excited. Like It takes Mm -hmm. them back to a very positive time in their lives. And then they, you know, coloring is not just for kids anymore, as you know. So Mm -hmm. Um, I like to think there's some big kids out there coloring as well. Yeah, you get grandma and grandpa, you know, uh, picking up the crayons, which is wonderful too. So, I haven't seen any grandmas and grandpas doing it, but uh, I don't, <laughs> I don't know, right? <laughs> right. Oh, that's so much fun. And then the other um, products as well, such as the uh, the challenge coins, uh, mm-hmm. those are meant to be interactive, where someone uh, literally pays it forward to the next pilot, right? You know, before I get on to that, the press release you did on the coloring book, I think is fantastic. I've already sent it to OPA. Oh, wonderful. Uh, We can get them to bite. But um, on to the coins. Yeah, the coins are really, I think, pretty interesting. Um, We have two of them right now. There's the World Peace Coin and a Courage Coin. And the original intention with the Courage Coin was that uh, pilots would buy it and then give it to an aspiring pilot. And they would carry it in their pocket everywhere they went. And when they needed courage, you know, they could reach down and touch it. They could learn about the trip and have an example of someone who's hopefully demonstrating those qualities. And then when they became a pilot, they would fly it forward, like you said, Paula, to another aspiring pilot. So it would have this mission throughout the community and be passed along. And, you know, the people that would use it would see, oh, this person had it before me also was inspired and got their license. So if they can do it, I can do it. And then, of course, for collectors of the coins. And then from there, when we started to focus on our world peace mission, it only seemed appropriate that we would have a world peace coin. And it's just a reminder for people. Every time I look at it, I see world peace and I see the planet and I see the citizen of the world. So it makes sense to me. And one of the things we're trying to do is take some of these coins with me. So each one of them is serialized, whether it's a coin on a keychain, uh, you know, hung from a string or um, a chain, or just simply carried in your pocket. So they're, they're serialized, they can be tracked, they're one of a kind in that respect. And I just, I think the world needs a reminder. And if you think about world peace every time you reach into your pocket or look at your keychain, that's part of manifesting it, is bringing it into your conscious mind. Right, that makes total sense. Um, And then there's also a very practical product. Uh, And, you know, a lot of people think socks are a terrible gift for for Christmas. But you know what? I love socks. I love getting socks and compression socks are really uh, important for pilots. I hear from a lot of um, women pilots actually on a lot of the, the boards, the discussion boards and things like that, talking about the compression socks that they've tried and, and how it makes so much of a difference as to not being exhausted at the end of the day and not having achy legs and everything else. So do they lean over Paul and say, you know, I've got compression socks on right now. Or- <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. Women talk about that sort of thing amongst each other, but I don't know if, uh, I don't know if guys talk about that sort of thing, but they should. So there you well, go. You know, the story behind the compression socks, I don't know if you know, this is um, mm-hmm. one of my good friends, a guy named John Kunis who was doing a flight from Oakland to Brunei 
uh, in a Piper or not a Piper, a Cessna 185. Mm. A couple of weeks after the trip, he died from a pulmonary embolism. A couple and, of weeks after the flight. Yeah, after his flight, he got back to the U.S. He was supposed to meet me over in Greece. And they took him to the hospital, and he died a short time later. And it was because that blood clot you know, moved through his system. And we think that if he had been wearing compression socks, it wouldn't have happened. Mm. So that was a promise I made to his brother, George. I said, you know, I want to do something positive to educate pilots to make it safer, because that's one of our missions. Mm-hmm. And I was uh, getting my hair cut, and the lady who cuts my hair said, you know, I just got this new client. He has a compression sock business. I thought, wow, there's a synchronicity. I can't ignore that. Contacted mm-hmm. him. Uh, we agreed uh, to have him donate some so we could test the market. And now Aircraft Spruce just placed their second order, and they're uh, promoting it and getting some pretty good response. So that's, you know, it's a, it's a small portion of what we're trying to sell out there in the aviation community to fund scholarships and this trip, but it's uh, very positive. And as you probably know, since you're in this business, you never really know what's gonna sell until you get it out there. And this seems to be one we're getting uh, traction with, no pun intended. Right, (laughs) yeah, there are always surprises. We like to say that marketing is uh, gambling with all of the data, but uh, you know, you know, statistically what's likely to work, but then there's always surprises out there, so. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Right. So you've been getting a lot of attention. Um, I know in AOPA magazine and uh, the Smithsonian, do you want to talk about some of, of how that's come about? Yeah. You know, AOPA, the Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association, has been with me since uh, 2000. I probably made uh, contact with them in 2014, about a year before my trip. And they have been some of the strongest supporters that I've had. Um, you know, they're passionate people, they're pilots, they're uh, spending their time promoting aviation and they're dedicated. Uh, they have a wonderful organization that's backed by some great philanthropists and I'm friends with a lot of them. I like them and they, uh, have backed me on this trip. Uh, they're running uh, videos on AOPA live, Tom Haynes and warning, uh, Warren Morningstar, uh, mm-hmm. good friend Yurka is their VP of marketing. We've uh, traveled together, but he is my strongest supporter. We're uh, set up to do some video blogs on the trip. I'm blogging for them with a reach of about 400,000 people. Oh, that's great. Um, I have regular interaction with them. And then most importantly, maybe their 80th anniversary logo is on the nose of the citizen of the world. And all the senior people have hand signed that. So I'll be taking their colors over Antarctica um, during their 80th anniversary, which I'm very proud of. And then most recently, I reached out um, to uh, the Smithsonian, to one of their editors, and she sent me back a wonderful email yesterday talking about how they want to feature the flight. Uh, It's part of social media, and they've asked, well, she's mentioned that there's a possibility I could come lecture for them. And that, for me, would be just a dream come true. Uh, I mean, this is the Smithsonian, you know, it, it helps validate our causes and the flight and uh, reminds me that I have a lot of supporters out there. Right. And you read your list of supporters. It's just like the who's who of uh, adventures and explorers and companies that are doing cutting edge things and, and things like that. I know the, um, the UN association uh, has asked you to speak at a couple of uh, actually many uh, different places. Yeah, we, we are partnering with them. And it's the San Diego regional office, but there are 250 offices all over the world. And they have this fantastic reach. It's a grassroots organization that supports uh, the UN. And I believe the uh, UN Foundation, which is, uh, you know, helps fund their efforts, is part of that. But, um, you know, talk about reaching out to the world with a very positive cause. We support uh, their 17 sustainability goals for uh, 2030. Uh, they talk about the oceans and education for all people, fresh water, and, you know, certainly this, the sky and the clouds and where I will touch with my plane are certainly covered as well. So, um, yeah, it's, this is taking on a whole new life. We had dreamt the impossibly big dream, which is involvement from people and organizations like this, but it's unfolding now. So I'm excited to see what it's going to be like when the trip starts because people tend to be more engaged. And then, of course, we'll leverage that for the two years after to see what we can do. 
Right, exactly. When you can refer them to to things that are actually happening and not just going to happen. And, right. um, yeah, the Explorers Club uh, is another really big one that uh, is really exciting as an opportunity as well, right? Yeah, that's unfolding right now. It's just accepted uh, into the um, Explorers Club a few days ago. Congratulations. And that's wonderful. This is a big deal. I didn't realize how big it, it was actually until after I got accepted and I was starting to do more reading. And, you know, astronauts have carried their flag to the moon. Uh, they have had flags at the North and South Poles. I believe it's in the Marianas Trench, the deepest part of the ocean. Um, and I'm applying right now to carry one of their flags on the entire trip. And they started with 200 of these flags back in, I believe it's 1902. And they retire, they've retired some of them, but I may be taking one of these original flags with me with so much history. It's mm -hmm. absolutely awesome. And, you know, people like Neil Armstrong, um, Richard Branson, uh, just an amazing list of explorers and philanthropists, really. Right. Exactly. So one thing we ask everyone uh, who joins us on our podcast is what book or movie inspired you the most? Um, well, one of my favorites, uh, Charles Lindbergh's The Spirit of St. Louis. Mm -hmm. uh, amazing book. Uh, one, because I'm talking to his grandson, Eric Lindbergh, right now. Um, but, you know, the things that he experienced on his flight across the North Atlantic very similar to the things that pilots experience now on these long distance trips, pilot fatigue, um, having an aircraft that's functional, but simple and not too complicated mm. is an advantage. He talks about how he dealt with the long periods of time. He did some hallucinating. I'm hoping not to have to go mm -hmm. through that, that uh, drill, but uh, navigation, weather, and uh, it's like you sort of reach back in time to some of the greats. So. Um, Really wonderful book. That has uh, definitely inspired me. So Excellent. you've been flying quite a bit. What's your favorite airplane? Well, I would say my favorite airplane is the one I'm flying, which is the... Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah, that's actually very humble because uh, most pilots always are looking ahead to the next plane. But I'm very, very satisfied and happy with the uh, Turbine Commander 900. It is uh, the latest uh, version uh, which Gulfstream bought from Rockwell. And mine's a 1983, so a little bit of an older plane, but uh, new Honeywell TPE-10T, 331-10T engines, MT propellers, uh, a fantastic 52-foot wing, 1983. and all kinds of space inside the cabin of the plane for six extra fuel tanks. Uh, new avionics panel by Avidyne, infrared sensor by MaxViz. I mean, this... Uh, an environmental system by Peter Schiff. This is one amazing aircraft, and it has great ramp presence, which will help us during the flight and after to help draw people into aviation. A uh, very high-flying plane. We modified it to fly at 35,000 feet instead of 28. Mm. Very fast. We still don't know how fast it'll go because we just put in this new environmental system that speeds it up a bit. But on my last flight at a lower altitude, I got 302 knots, which is around 350 miles an hour. And I know I can get faster than that. Um, and then the fantastic range. When it's properly outfitted, we think we'll have a range somewhere between 5,000 and 6,000 nautical miles. So that's like flying from San Diego to Honolulu. And before you land, you remember that you left your wallet on the counter back home. So you turn around and fly all the way back and you still have fuel in your tank. So somewhere between 20 and 24 hours of flight time. Mm. Uh, and it's funny because the Rob report is doing a story that should air in December and they're calling it the dream machine. Ah. So a fantastic aircraft actually used by the Panamanian and Colombian militaries for counter drug ops. But more interesting is that the engines on that plane are the same ones that the Predator drones use, which have just one of them, but they're very, very reliable aircraft. You know, the U.S. military could pick anything in the world, and they pick that engine. So, um, yeah, I feel fortunate to fly it. Um, you know, flying is such an incredible experience because you bring multiple things together all at once. You're traveling the world. You're connecting with nature. 
you're flying the aircraft, and more than likely you're with your friends. So mm -hmm. put all those things into one moment of time. Uh, that plane is just as good as it can get. Right. I think it was a trick question, John, to ask Rob Robert what his favorite airplane was. So I could go on for another hour. <laughs> so, so after the trip, um, so what's going to happen to the airplane? Um, well, I'll take it for two years to use it to promote aviation and our world peace cause and the oceans and any other cause we pick up along the way because it is our global billboard. Um, I hope to continue to fly it all over the world because it's certainly capable of uh, those distances and that mission. Uh, my goal is to let as many people see all those flags yeah. uh, and the sponsors as humanly possible. And I think it's hard to get in front of that plane with those huge props and the flags and um, all the colorful decals and not get excited about aviation. I mean, people just stand there and stare at it. So. Um, including me, and I've seen it a few times. So, Right, exactly. If, if the Smithsonian said they wanted to take it, maybe we'd figure out a way to, to do that. But oh, um, Maybe in 50 years or something after you're yeah, done with it. Yes, yeah, <laughs> I have a few things to do with it. That's exactly right. There you go. So how can people get involved with the trip, with the foundation, with you? What, uh, what can they do to, to help with this? Well, they could go to uh, www.pole, which is P-O-L-E, 2, T-O, pole, once again, flight.com, or they can go to the De Laurentiis Foundation. Uh, it's D-E-L-A-U-R-E-N-T-I-S, foundation.org. Uh, that's where if they want to contribute in any way possible, they could look at some products. They could even donate some cash, which we always need. Um, but to learn about the details of the flight, that pole to pole flight.com is a good way. And then, of course, we're on most of the social media. So Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, YouTube, Google+, Instagram. If you type in Zen Pilot, you're going to find us pretty quickly. Fantastic. Yeah, and I know on that De Laurentiis Foundation, if you want to know more about any of the products, there are some fabulous articles out there that uh, will tell you all about them, right? <laughs> yeah, I think you wrote some of them, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's uh, our... Uh, contribution to the effort and we're, we're really excited to, to be working with you and I'm glad we were able to, to find a way to make that work because I, I'm really excited about your mission as well. Yeah, your contribution has been huge um, at ABCI. I, you know, we're, we're searching for as many ways to get the word out. You guys have certainly taken the products and uh, run with them and, uh, you know, no one person, like I said, could do it and we've handed it off into your capable hands. So thank you. Appreciate right. that. Okay, so uh, great interview, and we're really happy that we were able to sit down with, with Robert since he's so busy getting ready for his next The Citizen of the World trip. Um, three marketing takeaways that uh, I took from that interview. One is think big. Of course. Yeah. Got to think big. Got to think big, and Robert thinks bigger than... A lot of people. A lot of people, that's true. What is the most challenging thing that you can think of, and... How does that change your enthusiasm level? How does that change the want, the way people want to work with you? All of those kinds of things. So thinking big is a wonderful thing. Uh, second is tie things together and build on your success. So Robert has done several missions mm -hmm. and also several books and several other projects. And he doesn't just walk away after having done one of these. He uses each of those things as stepping stones to build one on the other. So the book promotes his next trip. The trip promotes his next book. The coins, the products, the other things, uh, every time somebody sees somebody wearing his compression socks, uh, they're going to start talking about Robert De Laurentiis and, you know, what is he up to now? Mm -hmm. And all of those things build on each other. And thing number three is get help, right? Yeah, because he couldn't do this by himself for sure. Absolutely. He has this fantastic person named uh, Susan Gilbert, who put together a lot of the branding for the Zen Pilot brand and the Citizen of the World brand and a lot of the other things that have, have uh, come about. He got ABCI to help uh, with promoting his products for this trip, other things like that. So he can concentrate on what he needs to, which is doing the trip itself. Yeah and uh, getting other people to do what they do best and getting all of these organizations like the UN and uh, the Explorers Club and, and all of these things 
if you can give people a reason that they want to help you, uh, they are more than happy to do that in a lot of cases. So you can't do big projects by yourself. Right. And speaking of big, a mm -hmm. little tech note on this picture, those prop diameters are pretty close to 10 feet. Yeah. And you look <laughs> at the guy standing next to the prop, that's uh, this is a huge airplane. Like, like Robert said, this is going to have a, a really dramatic presence everywhere he goes. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how this, this turns out. So, um, ways to contact Robert and or the Pole to Pole Flight or the De Laurentiis Foundation on your screen, poletopoleflight.com, delaurentisfoundation.org. Uh, each of those things are, are good ways to get involved and uh, be part of that fantastic mission. I believe he's leaving San Diego, heading south. Yeah. And then around the other side and back. Absolutely. So this episode was brought to you by the Sales and Marketing Lab, where you get to meet fun people, <laughs> the coolest folks in the aviation industry. Um, so if you'd like to talk about your big plans and your projects and other things, uh, we do offer a 30-minute complimentary consultation. Uh, just go to our website, uh, abci1.com, click on the Contact Us button, yep. and schedule 30 minutes that's convenient for you, and we'd be happy to talk with you about what big things you've got in mind. And how we can help. Absolutely. Have a great day. <laughs> <laughs>